Welcome to our service of morning worship here at St. Mary Magdalene with St. Martin in Addiscombe in East Croydon. And a very warm welcome to all of you who are joining together, but from your homes. I'm really delighted to be able to um, invite Karen to help lead our service this morning. Karen has often led one of our evening services, and it seems good, seemed good to us to encourage her and ask her to join us on our morning team as well. So I'm going to leave it to Karen to begin our service and lead us through the morning worship liturgy, which will be on the screen so that you don't need to have books in your hands. At the end of the service, if you could make your way uh, to the exit behind you and then out to the front of the church as soon as you are able. And just to say thank you for not chatting in the aisles, I realize as we've become more familiar with worshiping together here, we can, I do the same, we've become much more relaxed about our actual two meters distance and we do have to be careful about that still, so thank you. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We stay seated as we listen to our first song, Kyrie Eleison. <laughs>
Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sin and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven people, we stand for the prayer of thanksgiving. <coughs> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all humankind. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be sincerely thankful so that we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Janet will now bring our reading to us, after which Anand will bring the word. The reading is Matthew 14. 22 to 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. Early in the morning, he came walking towards him on the sea, but the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They said, terrified, saying, it is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus, but when he noticed a strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got out into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. morning shall we pray father we thank you for this wonderful day lord thank you for bringing us together into your house father speak to us father we listen in jesus name amen um, we as you know that we are in a mini series of how to grow our faith and the topic for today is how does one in faith can face their doubts? 
uh, in our Christian journey, uh, how many of us can tell that there never been a period of doubt in our lives? Can, can, I, can I see your hands? Any one of you can say that I've never heard, had a period of doubt in my Christian journey. I, I, I thought so. I, I bet uh, no one could tell that. Because this has been an age-old phenomenon, and uh, there are learnings from the past. Those who did not feed their doubts won their victories through the, tr- through the struggles. But those who took after their doubts in a big way had to face failures. We can see this happening from the very story of creation. In the Garden of Eden, when the serpent started the conversation, he planted a doubt in the mind of Eve. He said, did God really say you must not eat from the, any tree in this garden? That's the subtle way of the enemy planting a doubt and then going for the kill later. And the rest is history, you know, as we know it at the end of the conversation, they disobey God. And, you know, it's the primary tool for the enemy, as I said, uh, you know, to sow a doubt in the mind of the believer and then inflicting a bigger damage. We, as children of God, should be very, very cognizant of that. As we open up to those doubts that he plants in our lives, he brings in fear and anxiety to make us numb and not move forward in the direction which the Lord wants us to move. They paralyze us from doing the will of God. After almost 40 years wait, the children of Israel were almost at the verge of entering their promised land. Moses now sends 12 spies to explore the land of Canaan. These 12 spies were all leaders of their own tribes. They go, and after 40 days, they come back, and 10 of these men bring a very bad report. They say, we can't attack those people. They are too strong for us. The land we explored is one that devours those who live there. All the people we saw there are very tall. We saw Nephilim there, who are the descendants of Anak. They're kind of people who are very, very gigantic. We felt as small as grasshoppers, and that's how we must have looked to them. On seeing the giants in the land, they began to doubt if they could overcome them. And we see them feeding to their doubts by making unnecessary and rather wrong assumptions about themselves. They thought that they looked like grasshoppers first, and then they also assumed that's how they must have looked to the people of Canaan. If you uh, read chapter 11 in the book of Numbers, you will see this act of theirs created a big commotion in the Israelites' camp so that so much so that the people, you know, the people of Israel wanted to choose a new leader and they almost decided to go back to Egypt. If not for the two other spies who were Joshua and Caleb, they could have lost the promised land. All of them would have perished on their way back. Joshua and Caleb they address the commu- entire, is, you know, entire community of Israel, and they say, the land we explored is very good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us. This is a land flowing with milk and honey. Don't rebel against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people of the land. We will devour them like bread, They have no protection, and the Lord is with us. So don't be afraid of them. Even in our lives, we as believers tend to analyze and process a lot of things very quickly when we go through difficult situations. 
and many questions of what if that happens or what if this happens comes gushing in our mind and this is where we need to be careful. If we feed into our doubts, it leads to various wrong assumptions and problems seems to appear much bigger than it was few hours or few minutes ago. A wrong decision in flesh at this time could take away, take us away from what God has in store for us or it could delay the process of what God wants to do in our lives. As we encounter doubts in our lives, one of the first things that we could do or one of the things that we could continue to do is to take an antidote. The antidote of doubt is faith. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. During these difficult times in our lives that we go through, as we hold on to God promises, you know, that's the best thing one could do. It could be by any means. It may be reading a portion of the scripture or a daily meditation, reading meditation book that you use. Uh, or it may be a Christian radio station that you've been listening to every day. Or it's a practice that uh, you have in writing down God's promises in your prayer book and reading them over and over again and holding on to them. This antidote of faith holds the virus of doubt at bay. For us believers, it does not profit anyone, except, of course, the devil, if we keep feeding into our doubts in each of the circumstances we go through. The Bible says, for one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For the person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Jesus also teaches us that no one puts his hand on the plow and looks back, is fit for the kingdom of God. We now come back to our reading today, which we heard from Karen. The disciples encounter something fearful they have not seen before. As their boat got tossed by the waves, they saw someone walking on the water and coming towards them, and their fears were very, very natural. Quite, they, they felt very helpless, and they started to cry. And we see the reassuring voice of Jesus intervening in the midst of their doubts and cares. Even in our lives, there are times when we weep alone, at times we have feeling that no one understands, or we are fearful that we are at our wit's end as doubts of our survival surround us. Jesus steps in, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus intervenes into our life just in time with his reassurances that he is with us. If you, if you go back to the start of our reading, there we see Jesus acting with an urgency. He packs the disciples in a boat, uh, you know, asking them to go quickly, and he disperses the crowd. And then the Bible says that he went up to the mountain uh, by himself to pray. I believe it is a very important discipline that kept him connected with his father when he took the form of a man in this earth. This connection daily would give him the guidance to do what the Father purported him to do. Even before the trial on the cross, where he was distressed and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground, we see him praying to his Father, asking this cup to pass from him. A disciplined prayer life helps when we go through a very chaotic situation. 
we also see in the book of Daniel, when Daniel knew that the document has been signed, the document to put people into lion's stand if they had worshipped some other god rather than the king himself. But when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, the Bible says he went into his house. There he had his windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he had done previously. A consistent prayer life played an important role in delivering him from all the doubts he would have had when he heard that the degree was signed to put him in the lion's stand. We see how Jesus and Daniel prayed consistently before they encountered a difficult situation in their life, and it is important to note that they prayed through those difficult situations in their lives. One man of God said, said like this, Fight all your battle on your knees, and you will win every time. As we come to the final part of our reading today, we see Peter, in his own enthusiastic self, wanting to emulate Jesus. He wanted to walk on the water. He wanted to be in control of the situation. He wanted to walk above the turbulent waves caused by the wind. His focus was Jesus as he stepped out into the water. It should have been Jesus till he reached him. But in between, like us, like most of us, his focus naturally shifted to the situation around him. The problem seemed bigger than the problem solver. And once his focus shifted to the wind, the doubts began to cloud his mind and he began to drown. Then we see Jesus reaching out to Peter and took hold of him, saying, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? Earlier in one of his teachings, we've, we've all heard this before, and Jesus says, For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Yes, it is fine to have a faith as little as a mustard seed. But there should not be an iota of doubt in it. And that's the problem with us. We have a little faith and we carry a bigger doubt within us. That's what the Lord wants us to move away from. The idea of the enemy is always to put doubts in our mind, and he paints a picture of impossibility and sure defeat. The enemy acts to make it all seem real. But let us be assured this morning that in the hardest of times, amidst our doubts and fear, our Lord intervenes. Uh, when I was young, uh, I, I thought my father would do everything for me. He being uh, in quite a well-placed job, my thoughts were he would get me a placement when I grow up, somewhere as he had the connections. But when my father suddenly passed away when I was 14, all my securities began to fall, and things around me started to crumble. Doubt and fear gripped my mind as to how am I going to navigate in this world. And it was one of those most fearful and stressful times in my life, surrounded with confusion and doubts. As I continued to wrestle my fear and doubt for a few years, the Lord did intervene. He did connect me with people who would pray for me. I was fortunate to have my science teacher who was a Christian in school and who would pray for me and with, along with a few friends, almost every day after school. And, and that, that, that gave me a lot of confidence. That boosted my faith within. And when we go through doubts, it's always a good practice to have a prayer partner. Join with them. And no one can walk alone. 
in our Christian journey. And we should depend on people who would help us, who would pray, pray with us from time to time. And God brings different people in our lives. And we necessarily need to be open to them uh, and open for, for God's uh, providence in our life when he brings those people and get those guidance and prayer support that we need. Then in college, the Lord took me, uh, the Lord led me to a one converted friend who had converted from another religion, and he was my classmate. And he was quite instrumental in me being baptized by the Holy Spirit. I, I vividly remember four of us, including him, praying for a few hours together, seeking the Lord to fill us with his spirit. And the Lord for some time has been asking me to surrender a particular thing in my life. It was going on for some time. Every time I would go to ask for the Lord to fill me with the Holy Spirit and he would bring that particular thing in my mind, I would just push it away and then start praying, keep praying for him to fill me with the Holy Spirit. But again, on that day, I said, Lord, I surrender it. I surrender it. I, I, I completely come under your authority. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit on that day. I could not contain myself. It was, it was full of joy and peace and the courage that I had never before. All my doubts and all those fears in me vanished on that day. Looking back at those experiences, I now understand why the Lord had taken me through that journey. Keeping doubts away and not feeding into it. It is, it is easier said than done when we go through those difficult situations. It may, it may at times look like climbing a never-ending hill. And when we do not see answers coming quickly to our expectation, that is when we are encouraged to continue to hold on to his promises again and again, going on our knees again and again. Because he who has formed us, formed you and me in our mother's womb, knows what he is doing in our lives. Perhaps he is molding you so that you could be a vessel of honor. Perhaps he is pruning you so that you may be fruitful or more fruitful wherever you are. Or perhaps he is refining you as pure gold so that his image will be seen in you. As the Ren Collective song goes, which we all sing, and it's one of my favorites, in our wrestling and in our doubts, in our failures, he won't walk out. His great love will lead us through. And he's our peace in our troubled sea. In closing, I would want to leave you with this verse in Jeremiah 29, 11. The Lord says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. Father, we are people of little faith. Many times we allow doubts to cloud our minds, Father. Father, we pray this morning that you will strengthen us. And as in the words in Jeremiah, which says that you always have a plan to do good, good to us, Lord. Your plans are always to bless us and not to harm us. Father, as we go through those doubtful times, let us remind ourselves that you are working on us and you will come through. And you will come through. As Peter began to sank helplessly, you put your hand out and raised him up. You are a God who intervenes in our lives at the right moment as we continue to hold on, move away from the doubts and hold on to your word and your promises 
and keep seeking your face. You will make us fruitful where we are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us spend a few moments reflecting on God's word for us this morning, brought to us by Anand. And now we say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now Jenny and Chris will lead us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Eternal God, as we gather together to worship you, quieten our hearts that in these moments of peace, in the turmoil of everyday living, we may feel your presence around and within us. We thank you for the dedication of all those who have attended this church before us, maintained its beauty for us to enjoy, and supported the mission of the gospel to Addiscombe and the wider world. Let us also consider and be thankful for the good things around us, the beauty of the autumn colors, a bountiful harvest, making new friends, birthdays, anniversaries, and memories of loved ones. In these difficult and challenging times, help us to see the beauty that is behind the mask we are advised to wear that we will not be overcome by our doubts and fears and continue to trust in our Lord Jesus to bring salvation and healing into all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Gracious Father, we pray for peace in your world, for the leaders of the nations, that they may have the wisdom to know and the courage to do what is right. For all men and women, that their hearts may be turned to you in the search for righteousness and truth. For those who are working to improve international relationships, that they may find the true way of reconciliation. For those who suffer as a result of war, the injured and disabled, the mentally distressed, the homeless and hungry, those who mourn their dead, and especially those who are without hope, or friends to sustain them in their grief. Be with them, Lord, in their turmoil, we pray. Amen. Lord, we pray for the people of St. Mary's. We thank you that we are able to join together now for worship here and with those who are watching at home, and we thank you for those who work to make this possible. We pray for Amanda and all who lead and guide us in our worship, and we pray for our singers and musicians as they work in different ways. We bring before you the plans for restarting the children's groups, and we pray for Val in her new role as children's work coordinator. We pray for our spas as they administer the pastoral care of our congregation, and we pray for groups that are meeting online 
that they may enjoy times of fellowship and learning of the good news of your love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with our hopes for a better world, the equality of all races, the working out of conflict by negotiation, the respect of our natural environment and the care of the young and elderly. We pray for all who have been working on the front line to bring essential services during the pandemic. We pray for all who have to make difficult decisions to ensure the safety of our population alongside maintaining the economy. We pray for scientists working to develop a safe vaccine against the virus. Guide and strengthen them in their work, O Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for those in need and bring before you those who are ill, those who are anxious about the future, those who feel isolated, those experiencing breakdown in a relationship, and those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We bring before you now anyone who is on our heart today. We give grateful thanks for the life and faith of James Price, who is now at peace in your heavenly kingdom. We continue to pray for Muriel and all the family and many friends, that they will know your comfort and peace in the days and weeks ahead. Be with them, Lord, we pray. Amen. Finally, we pray for ourselves and ask God's blessing on whatever we may be doing in the week ahead. Father, you give us gifts of love daily. You provide the sun which warms the earth. You give us love which warms our hearts. You give us peace when we are troubled. You stand beside us when we are tempted. We thank you and praise you for all these things. Keep us safe and always mindful of your great generosity. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We can continue in our prayers as we pray the collect for this Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to what is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Just before we come to our closing song and the blessing, just a few notices to draw your attention to. They've been sent to you by email and by Royal Mail. First of all, can I just thank all who were able to help prepare the church and our service for the uh, service of Thanksgiving on Friday for James. And uh, his family did such a wonderful job in putting uh, their tributes together and prayers and readings and so on. It was a real blessing, I felt, to be part of that Thanksgiving service. And let's continue to pray for Muriel and all the family uh, 
in the loss, in the wake of the loss of James, our much-loved brother. Thank you very much for adhering to um, the guidelines I had to sort of re-emphasize. When we come into church now, we're much more relaxed, which is really good, actually. We're much more familiar with this new normal. But what also happens, I found myself doing it, I sometimes forget to bring my mask in and um, find myself too, standing too close to people in animated conversations. So when we arrive, the best thing is to go and sit down and then talk to people from where you're sitting. Otherwise, we tend to get a bit of a congestion in the aisle and you don't realise when you're standing and talking to somebody, there may be somebody just behind you with their back to you and actually you are sort of five inches apart rather than, <laughs> rather than six feet. So thank you for thinking about that. And also just to encourage you, please, not to park in front of the church so we keep the forecourt completely clear. That means when you leave, there's plenty of space in the fresh air to stand apart from each other but also to have a conversation. Our next service is on Wednesday. This Wednesday morning at 10.30, we have a service of Holy Communion, a short service, but really lovely to welcome all who can come. The seats are placed around the edge of the carpet here at two metres distance from each other, so you're kept very safe. If you'd like to join us on Wednesday at 10.30, it would be lovely to see you there. And just to ask you, if you can download the... NHS COVID-19 app to your phone to use the QR code, code, that little block that we've put up both in the tower and uh, on the welcome desk here to sign in. That's a much more efficient way now to keep safe, but also to hear if there is any need for you to isolate. We haven't heard any news of anybody who's been to church recently who have got any COVID systems, but should that happen, we all need to know those who've been worshipping here on that occasion. So we come to listen to our closing song and then we will have our blessing.
Through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.